Hey, welcome. My name is Troy Maris. I am pumped to have you here. Today on the bench, we have the Zeppin Micro 3 slider. Now we're going to put this thing through its paces, make sure it holds up in a studio, as well as for those of us who travel for work. Now, there's one aspect of the slider that I particularly like, so let's talk shop. The Micro 3 is actually a collection of sliders from a company called Zeppelin. Now the Micro 3 comes in three different slider lengths. Each one of those lengths could be used on its own as a standalone handheld unit, or you could pair it with the universal motor for more precise autonomous movements. Here in the shop, we've got the E700. The first thing that jumped out at me about the Micro 3 is its small form factor. Now Zeppelin uses what they call a hello flush design and what that ultimately is is that the rails are on a 45 degree angle to better disperse the vertical and horizontal load components. All that to say, it creates a form factor that really is pretty sleek and compact. The load capacity of the Micro 3 is anywhere from 4 to 12 kilograms. For those of us here in the States, 8 to 26 pounds. Now you get that range based on the angle that you have your slider placed on. So the more horizontal it is, the greater load it's going to be able to, to hold. Uh, the more vertical you go, the more this motor has to work and that weight begins to drop proportionately. That's where you get that range from 8 to 26 pounds. The slider itself has four feet tucked underneath of it that can swing out if you want to use the slider on the ground or perhaps on a tabletop. There's also one knob on the top of the slider that serves two purposes. The first is it's a physical locking mechanism to lock the slider in place for transport or if you step away to grab a new lens or, or get lunch. You don't have to worry about your slider moving while you're gone. That knob also serves as the adjustable dampener. If you're using this in cold climates, if you're using it handheld, you can adjust the amount of tension that's on this slider as you move it back and forth. On the bottom of this, this gets pretty cool. You're gonna find a handful of different mounting options. In the center, you're gonna find quarter 20 and 3 8 holes in various orientations for your tripod plates. As well as out on the sides, you're gonna find quarter 20 plates as well for tripod support, which we'll talk about more later, as well as a point to anchor this if you're going under slow. All right, onto the actual motor itself. This attaches via just a couple captured screws on and off really pretty quickly. And this is it, this is our motor unit. You'll find a couple physical buttons on there and, and we love to see physical buttons because that means we can get a lot of functionality out of the motor without actually having to go into some type of app. And I'm trying to use my phone as little as possible when I'm working, so that's great. On the back side of it, you're gonna find a few inputs. You got a USB-C as well as a remote port. This could be powered via five volt, two amp USB. So that's great. And then you have one more powering option, which is a NPF style battery. And that should pretty well bring you up to speed as to what the Zeppelin Micro 3 has to offer. So let's put it into practice. For me to truly utilize a slider in my productions, which look like a lot of commercial work, about half of it's done here in the studio, the other half is done out on location. For me to actually take advantage of a slider, the most important metric is gonna be efficiency. How quickly can I get my shot up? Many of you know this, there's just, not a lot of time. Certainly not as much time as I would like to have to experiment and play around and get the shot that I truly want. So the longer it takes for me to get the shot up, the more likely it is that it's gonna get cut. All right, and then by extension of that, how much extra gear am I going to need to bring to get the shot? Because that just adds that much more complexity, that much more time, that much more likely it gets left behind. So those are the metrics that we're gonna test this slider against today and it all comes down to efficiency. Uh -huh. Like Steve McQueen, I'm in the fast lane when the light turns green. And I built tough, I ain't nothing but grit. Cause I made rugged blood, sweat, and spit. Yeah, like a horse I fly. Better push yourself in for a bumpy ride. I like to play hard, but I work harder. And I weather the storm cause I'm built stronger. I was born to run. I was built to last. I was made for speed. Cause I was born fast. Born to run. Okay, pros and cons, here we go. I, I get way too excited about pros and cons lists, but here we go. Pro number one of the Micro 3 is that it is very simple. 
Simple is not easy to do. Simple is actually very hard to do. And they've done a great job of doing so here. It's easy to get set up. It's easy to attach the motors and attach various pieces to it. It's easy to control. I don't need to have an app. It is simple. And if you follow this channel for any amount of time, you know that I truly value simplicity. So that's, that's a, a for sure pro of the Micro 3. Our second pro is going to be quality construction. My first impression when I took this slider out of the case was, man, this is really well built. You could tell right off the bat that this is not their first iteration of a slider. This comes from a lineage of sliders that they've been able to improve upon and, and give us what we have today. It's got a good weight to it that's not a burden, but it's also not so light that it feels cheap, and it's got a great fit and finish to it. Nothing rattles around. It's just well built. And our third pro is gonna be the price point that this comes in at. In comparison to other sliders on the market, we're talking Edelkrone, we're talking Rhino, this comes in considerably lower than some of the other counterparts, and we really are in a pretty similar ballpark as well. So that's gonna be our third and final pro of the Micro 3. Let's move on to our cons. The first con is gonna be me walking back one of my statements from earlier about this being simple. Um, simple is very hard to do, right? And because we have a simple button layout, it means we have very few buttons, which makes interfacing with the slider itself a little bit more complex. So, so our first con is a complex button assignment. Now, what this looks like is when you go to set your waypoints manually, you have to memorize a couple of button sequences to, to get this up and running. Now, if you were like me, you grew up playing a couple of video games on PlayStation and you got cheat codes memorized, X, X square, triangle, circle, right, left, L1, R2, like whatever, then like you're gonna be set. Um, but one of the guys I work with, maybe that wasn't his story. He has a, a tough time remembering uh, the button assignments, right? So for example, to set your first waypoint, you double tap the power button, set your, set, set your second waypoint, double tap the power button again, then you press power button left to start, power button right to, to stop. When there's a thousand things on set to think about, that can be an easy thing to forget in the moment. So, you know, it's a trade-off pro and con of simplicity, but that is gonna be our first con, complex button assignment. Our second con are going to be our powering options. We've got a USB-C input and we have NPF batteries. I don't really like NPF batteries and try as I might, I just cannot get rid of them from my workflow. I always have another piece of gear that requires NPF batteries. So I'm destined to be stuck with them. The slider is no different. This does use NPF batteries, but really where the kind comes into play when we attach the pan tilt head from Zeppelin to this to interface it all together and give us three axis movement, we're gonna need three separate NPF batteries to power this whole thing, unless we use the USB-C option, but then we need three separate USB-C cables rigged to our slider to power all three of those. So that can be a little bit cumbersome having to use three NPF batteries. And then if you're on a shoot long enough where they die, now you need three additional ones to replace it. So power supply, that's gonna be a count. Our third con is going to be the separate cases that, that these units come in. Now they're very well made cases that they come in, but they're all separate. I love bags, I love cases, I love storage. And I would like to be able to purchase an option that came with one case that housed everything and just had a, had a perfect spot for it all. These coming in separate cases just add to the bulk and make it a little bit harder to transport all of them or carry them all in your arms as you're moving from one place to the next. I'll ultimately probably end up putting all of this kit into a Pelican case with the track pack divider system and it'll render that point moot. But it's something worth knowing. It's, it's a bit of a con in my book, if you ask me. So there you have it. Take this information and use it to make the best decision for your work. In my opinion, this is one of the best bang for your buck sliders that you can buy. I think Zeppelin's done a great job of striking that balance between price point and the quality you can get for that price. Bonus points. Welcome to Whose Line Is It Anyway, the show where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Uh... Bonus points for being a scalable system to where you could buy just a slider first and use it manually, and then progressively upgrade, adding the optional motor or the pan tilt axis, longer sliders as you see fit. So those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. Thank you for hanging out with me today. See you in the next vid.